Okay, finally getting around to finishing up the um, my office slash den that I've been working on for a while. And it's time for this old desk to go. And so I went around and I dug out a couple pieces of ash that I had sawn probably about six years ago that grew in my backyard. Nice and dry. I did go down to Home Depot to get some other stuff. And it had these Bessie Clamps 4-packs on sale for $14.97, I think it was. So I grabbed three of them knowing I'd need a couple extra clamps. I thought it was a pretty good deal. And I didn't realize that Bestie clamps were made in China nowadays, but they, you know, definitely are according to this packaging. So the first thing I had to do was go back and cut the natural edge off of these pieces. They were, you know, cut with a, to be a natural edge slab, but I decided to use them for, you know, this uh, project. Once I got one edge straight, I had to go back and just take a, the other edge and cut it down to be less than 8 inches wide because that's the width of my joiner. Um, if I, I would sure wish I had more room and I you know, was able to replace it with a 12 inch joiner because uh, it would be so much easier for big pieces like this. But anyhow, like you, you, know, you make do with what you have and you can see this is uh, maxing out the capacity of it. And these boards actually started out as a five quarter they were sawn at and in the end by the time I got everything all flattened and straight on them I wound up with uh, exactly one inch thick on all of them so uh, you can see it's a little bit of work when you got a little shop and you're trying to you got a tool jammed in there and you're trying to uh, work with some nine foot nine and a half foot pieces here so it does uh, you know, it does push the machinery to its limits here. Put a couple passes and I actually got them flat. You want to make sure you put most of the pressure on the out feed table. You don't really want to push down too hard on the in feed because you want the boards to come out flat when you're done. So you have to do a couple light passes like that. And then once I got them uh, flat on one side, it was time to go back and run them through the planer, and this is where I wound up bringing them down to the one inch thickness. Now, one of the boards I had was uh, a little bit wider. It was about 14 inches wide, and I didn't want to try to cut that down the middle, and here it is. So I just decided to do several really light passes through the planer with it, and luckily it came out perfectly flat when I was done. In the meantime, I ordered some file cabinets from Costco, UPS, probably about three weeks ago. And the first, uh, I ordered three of them, and the first three came. They're all extremely damaged. You can see here's another batch. Boxes are all damaged. The cabinets are all damaged internally. Um, forklifts have been put through the sides of them. Steel bars have been put through them. Heavy weights have been dropped on top of them. And uh, the six safe ships so far, I've actually uh, have one good one. And they're shipping out more now, so I don't know how many times it's going to take to get good ones. But I've never seen UPS damage packages so bad. And Costco says, don't worry, they'll just keep on shipping until I get new ones. Because uh, UPS has to cover them when they, you know, beat them up that bad. So now I'm back to, uh, back to down the shop after that delivery. All aggravated again, because I had to call Costco and reorder and schedule a pickup. And now I'm trying to get one edge of these boards straight. First pass, I forgot to open the dust gate there, so you can see a lot of dust up on top. So again, it's uh, you know you're dealing with big boards on little machines, so it does take some time. And now that I've got two faces flat, one edge straight, I'm going to go back and just kind of make every these parallel to the other side and take some final cuts on it there. Yeah, I'm set up so I have plenty of room to build a uh, four foot tall cabinet. But boy, when you get into these nine foot long desktops and stuff, it's really a struggle to, to get things uh, to fit in at the machinery the way I have it. Now I'm getting ready to do some to glue these boards up. And I'm just going to put some biscuits in them. I decided that I was going to, um, I didn't have enough slabs that were actually dried. So I decided I was going to just double up some one inch boards here and wind up with a two inch thick edge at least on the front of the top. Um, if I had more slabs that were ready to go I would have used them but then it would have probably been too heavy for me to move it out of the shop anyway. So 
this turned out to be the best way for me and I'm gluing it up with the tight bond too so you really don't have a lot of time to waste when you're doing glue ups with that because it does set up and uh, you know catch pretty quick so I'm just uh, gluing up the first two two slices there and you can see they you know all glued up and they did come out nice and flat um, and then I'm gonna go back and put the uh, last board on now this desktop actually comes out about, about 26 and a quarter wide overall so it's just, just about a standard counter width and uh, you know here I am just getting ready to biscuit and glue on that last piece and things do start getting pretty heavy when you're dealing with pieces this big So there's another, just another glue up and just trying to keep everything straight and flat. And luckily I've got a nice flat table to work on there to, to hold it all flat. But um, this is where, you know, get preparing the boards good ahead of time really pays off that everything fits together nice and everything actually stays really nice and flat once it's all clamped up. Yeah, you can see it came out perfectly flat in the end. But it is kind of, you know, pushing the limits of my shop, as you can see. So now I flipped them over uh, once everything's glued up and get that extra glue that fell out of the bottom there. And I just use an old paint scraper and that takes it right off so it doesn't plug up the sandpaper later. Now you can see it's 64 degrees in my shop right now. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's over 100 degree heat factor out now and it's going to be that way for a couple of days. So... You know, that's why I decided to do an indoor project because I just can't take that heat anymore. So I'm nice and cool down here uh, working away. And now I'm just putting a strip on the front there. You can see that to double it up to be a uh, two inch thick. So it looks like it's a two inch thick uh, desktop. And actually give it a little more rigidity as it stretches across over the cabinets. And this is the point I was really happy that I had uh, grabbed those extra clamps at Home Depot because to, to get all the glue squeezed out good when you're doing something that's flat and you get a really tight seam it does take a lot of clamps and as I told my wife you can never have enough clamps and uh, she saw this and she believed it so there it is I'm just gonna let that sit for an hour and dry and in the meantime she's upstairs making some new beds to go with the room to match everything else for the puppies and there's a puppy in the first one. And it doesn't smell like her, but she did get used to it. And I just used an old uh, foam mattress, memory foam topper. And we got some felt at uh, Joanne's. And the glue is all dry. The clamps are off. And it's time to just go back and do some sanding and trimming the pieces to length. And again, you can't get a panel this size on the, up on my saw or any other way to cut it. So... It all has to be done by, you know, using hand tools like this. And I will say this 20-volt uh, circular saw has really been a, a great uh, addition. It, it does do a good job. Even though I said I'd never switch over to the battery tools, um, I think this, this has kind of convinced me how powerful these new 20-volt tools are with the brushless motors. Someday I have to make some kind of a track saw, like track to just drop the saw in. Just to, you know, I wind up doing a lot of stuff like this because I just don't have room to cut it on the saw. And then those little end cutoffs that I just cut off, I'm going to just trim them <clears throat> down and use them to uh, give you a false look of 2 inch thick, uh, you know, number on the end of it too, on the one end that's visible. So I just cut them to, to width, about 4 inches wide there, and uh, then it's time to just trim them down so that they'll fit in place and... Same thing, you know, time to glue them on. I just uh, use an old uh, old gift card there to spread the glue. That works good for me. And then you can just toss them out when you're done. So, you know, it's a good use for them. And then it was a matter of just uh, getting everything clamped up, pulled together tight there. So that kind of mimicked a thicker piece of wood. Which, I mean, you can really tell when you look at it if you look close. But for me, it's good enough for this project. There it is, a bunch of clamps again holding everything together. Just had to give that an hour to dry. 
And then it was time to go back and put a radius on the one corner where you walk in the door there. So I just used the old uh, jigsaw. Yeah, it didn't come out perfect, so time to take the belt sander and just uh, go back and clean everything up to get it cleaned up down to the line. Good. And once that's cleaned up, it's time to just go back and do a quick sanding on the entire top to just clean off all the pencil lines and stuff. And uh, I just started on the bottom of it, putting a radius around and sanding it down and then uh, putting a coat of polyurethane on the bottom of it. And with this water-based polyurethane, basically I just, I've learned to just sand it to 120 grit because the grain raise is so bad when you're, um, once you put the first coat on, you've got to really sand it good anyway. So then I just flipped it over and, uh, you know, I'm working on the top side now and same thing, do a final sanding. And as I said, 120 grit's good enough for me, um, because that water-based polyurethane is just such a grain raiser. And, and I'll go back and I'm just going to finish putting the, uh, the radiuses around it just to break the corners. And then I'm going to put some polyurethane on it. Um, in the end, I wound up putting on three coats. Put down the first coat. And then you really have to sand that good. I I go back with 220 grit when I sand the, between the coats with this stuff now. Anything finer, the paper just seems to plug up. So I got the, the first coat on there. And then I went back and I did... Uh, two more coats on both sides sanding between them with some 220 grit paper just to you know get them smooth again and you can see it's starting to come out pretty nice now so when you when you do a slab like this you want to make sure that whatever you do to the top side you do the exact same thing to the bottom side so you really don't have a problem later so um you know there it is all finally coated up and then I had some more pieces that I had prepped at the same time for brackets to hold the uh, desk up and the leg and stuff. So I'm just going to start by going back and trimming them down to the widths that I need. And, uh, you know, basically it's kind of going to be like a floating desk. Um, and I just wanted to put some radiuses where you might have a chance to you know, contacting what you need or something under there. It's kind of all hidden, but so I just have a thick uh, blade, a 5 8 blade on the band, so I can't really cut a tight radius, so I just hack it off and then go back to this jet sander and sand it. And I tell you, this is like the most handiest machine in this shop. I should have bought it years ago. I just love that machine. It's been problem-free and it just works perfect. And now it's time to go back and uh, a couple of these bars are going to sit, well that desk is actually going to hang off some shelf brackets on the back side. So a couple of these bars needed to be slotted out so I could just slip them over a uh, shelf bracket and wouldn't see the bracket itself. So I just set up a dado blade and I'm taking a 2 inch deep uh, by about 5 8 wide slot out of them, or 0.56 wide slot out of them, just so it'll all uh, It'll just kind of drop right over the shelf support. And that, uh, that tenon jig really does help. And there's a bracket that's going to go in there. And you can see that it'll just be hidden right in there. It'll drop right on. And then you do the second one. And you can pretty much see how handy that, that jig is just for holding things and guiding it. And, I put some masking tape there on the table so I knew where to stop the cut before coming out the other end and stuff. And then one, one piece I had a taper to be kind of like a, a leg on it. And I looked all over. I can't find my taper jig. I have no idea what I did with that. So I just took a piece of plywood that I had laying there. That was, uh, I think, about four and a half inches wide. Nice parallel edges. And decided to just stick it to my... Uh, piece that I have to cut on a taper and first I drew the lines on it and I'm just gonna line this plywood right up on them so I know that I'm cutting where I want to and I've got some really good industrial double-sided tape there that I'm using and, and that just allows me to cut right up to the line and uh, makes everything easier without having a jig I have no idea what I did with the jig then for the, the leg assembly on the end I'm just gonna use some Craig screws there, the, the one way to get like instant satisfaction, not waiting for glue to dry or 
you know, anything else. You put it together and you're done. Yeah, I'm just gonna put one in from each side. Uh, one one side will be hidden from the outside up under the uh, one inch lip of the front lip there. And the other one you won't see because it'll be on the inside up against the cabinet. But I figured, you know, putting opposing ones in might make it a little bit stronger. And this, this really is a, you know, handy tool to have. And then I'm going to just throw a little glue on them anyway before I put the screws in there. A little bit of that Type Bond 3 there then. And uh, it's just a matter of, when you use these Craig screws, if you don't have it clamped good, uh, things can move. Especially when you're putting a screw in from each side. So I just figured I'd, you know, clamp it the long ways there and then just get another clamp right across the joint there to keep everything perfectly aligned and another thing that I'm finding out is with the last batch of screws that I bought you really have to be careful when you put them in you have to really I mean it's in a very powerful impact wrench but it will snap them easily you have to kind of feather them it seems like the, the heads aren't is they're, they're over hardened or something because the, the screws do snap easy in this last batch so I just kind of have to ease them in because once you break a screw in the hole, it's really uh, kind of impossible to get another one in alongside of it. So I just go, go easy with it and just keep feathering it until I see the bit stop turning. And there you go. Instant satisfaction. Joints all done, ready to be sanded and finished now. Then on the bottom, that one thing there, I'm going to put a, uh, a leveling pad on the bottom and I just got a like a t-nut that goes up in there and the foot threads into it you can see it's got a couple ears that actually grab the wood and then for mounting the top I'm going to use some of those little uh, tabletop clamp brackets so things can move because a 26 inch slab is going to probably move 3 eighths of an inch you can see I'm just going to I just put some grooves in all the crossbars there and I'm just going to put those clamps up from the bottom and just to hold it in place and you know allow it to move and then it's time to go back and do break edges and stuff like that before the final finishing. So there's the first bracket that goes against the wall and there you can see there's the two middle ones that hang off the uh, shelf brackets. And then this one here actually hangs off the shelf bracket but it also has a leveling leg on it so you can you know sit on it and stuff and not worry about it and now I'm just doing a final 320 sanding on the top here and, um, actually I did 320 then I did a thousand grit then I went back and I uh, put a coat of a couple of coats of Johnson paste wax on it time to go up and start installing the brackets and you know move that last cabinet out of there so you can see those shelf standards do stick down and I couldn't carry the the top around so I just gave my wife a call with a little garden gopher there and was actually able to, to drag it outside and just load it on the back of that and let her bring it around uh, it, that that thing has really been very handy for all kinds of little hauling jobs like this um, she can't drive the tractor but boy she loves driving that thing so it just does make a big difference in being able to get a lot of help with it and it will carry a lot I'm pretty amazed the seat flips down there and you've got that little flat surface to put stuff on and does a good job and uh, I told her if she goes too fast with it though with that board on the back she might take off and fly and she didn't, didn't really like that there it is uh, kind of trying to roll it in now I got my roller skate there to roll it on the top uh, definitely weighs uh, well over 100 pounds i don't know exactly what it is but uh time to just pick it up and slide it on the brackets that are in place there and then, like i said there's one cabinet that i got there that's good and there's actually uh two more on the way hopefully i'll get a good another good two someday to fill in the other side and there's my roller skid i use for moving panels and stuff like that around it really does work good and helps out a lot so there it is. I've uh, you know got my new desk installed there. Uh, it's almost nine feet long, 26 inches wide. There is a gap in the back there behind the cabinets, and I'm going to build a 
uh, shelf for my tripods back here because I've got like six of them now and I've got plenty of room for all my equipment now and uh, you know the printer fits on there and everything fits good and you can see this the shelves and everything I made in the last videos all match perfectly and you know all the uh, the yarn wall on the other side so we're real happy with it and these cabinets are really nice I just can't wait to get the rest of them so I can get everything all straightened out and you know finalized here and another uh, there's where the cabinets are going to go and another thing I did invest in is a uh, Synology NAS unit there to do all my backups on and to uh, actually I want to set up an email server and a small file server for um, sharing some files in the future if I once I get around to it figure out how to do it so this is it basically you know the wood started growing in my backyard and uh, a couple days a couple years later it was dry ready to go and uh, turned it into a desk Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.